I'm going to be looking at AI structure in the upcoming Lumina 4 right after the break. Hi everyone, I'm going to do a very quick run through of one of the latest features of the Lumina 4 release that's coming out very soon. So before I start, I do have to mention that this is a um, beta or pre-production version. And what that means is that some of the details, the layouts and so on of this software and even some of the namings may change slightly between now and the final release. Um, so bear that in mind. Um, as you're comparing this to the final version when that's released uh, but it does allow me to give you a better idea of the AI structure tool. So Lumina 4 is the latest in the Skylum uh, range of software and it's the um, next version to Lumina 3. What it does differently though is it combines Lumina 3 and Lumina Flex into one. So it functions as both a plugin and a library, which is great news because it means you don't have to worry about do you have Flex or do you have Luminar 3 and, and which one is appropriate. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look at the AI structure. In this uh, right hand side corner, you've got all of these respective um, filters, if I can call them that. Um, you've also got an essentials button creative, portrait, pro, and appreciated. So I'm gonna go into essentials and then AI structure. And so AI structure has two different sliders. Um, there's an amount slider and there's a boost slider. And so what AI structure does is it's like a, an intelligent um, contrast or clarity, and it's designed to uh, kind of add localized contrast and texture and depth to photos or reduce that depending on whether you go in positive or negative on the slider. So here I have a photo of a snake. What I'm going to do is I'm going to increase this by moving it to the right and you'll see it's starting to bring out some of the details of the snake but it's actually been fairly selective in what it does so you know when you look at the scales at the front of the snake it's not doing nearly as much as you know some of these areas that it feels it needs some more work on now i'm conscious people aren't big fans of snakes so i'm going to go across to a different one and in this case i've got a black and white lizard and so now again ai structure and i can slide this across and you can see it's now having a think about what it's going to work on and it's applying that fairly selectively. So some of the areas of the front legs aren't being adapted, but you know, the claws and the face are. Now you've got the usual controls. So you could go into edit mask and brush um, and you can then brush on the areas that you do want it to be applied to. Um, and allow it to apply in those areas, but not others. Um, so now I'm going to go into another photo. And in this case, I've got a photo of a butterfly. Um, again, AI structure. I just go into the essentials button and then AI structure. And now I slide that up and you can see it's starting to do a fair bit of work on the butterfly's wing, but probably less so on the face. There's also a boost. So boost allows me to take that little bit further as well. Um, and when I go before and after, you can see that's made quite a remarkable difference to that butterfly. Um, you know, it's really brought out a lot of the localized contrast, but only in the areas that it needs it, you know, um, it doesn't need it everywhere. So it's less fussy about that. But if I didn't want the leaves to be, um, affected, then I would just mask those out. So again, I'm going to go to another butterfly photo 
Um, and this is sort of a, a macro butterfly photo. Um, and now I'm gonna go into AI structure and I'm gonna adjust that amount again. So you can see it's really doing stuff to the wings and the body, but very little to the eye. Um, you know, so when I go to before and after, you can see it, it's made quite a remarkable difference to that. So they're all fairly close up animals. What about something like the giraffe? So in this photo, I've got the giraffe. I'm gonna go again to essentials, AI structure. And if I slide that to the right, it's now working on what it thinks it needs. And so it is making a bit of a difference to the skin, but not nearly as much um, because it's determined that, well, really it probably doesn't need that much um, AI structure. And as I said, it's quite intelligent about where it applies it. Now, in all of these examples, I've showed where I've increased local contrast to add depth and texture and so on. But what I can do is I can go the other way. And now if I go to the right hand side, what that's doing is that's actually reducing that. So if I do before and after, very subtle, but you can see in those leaves in the background, it's reduced that localized contrast. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the butterfly photo because I think this might be a better example of how you can change um, to remove contrast. So again, AI structure, but this time I'm gonna bring it all the way down to the right. And so you can see that has changed that very, very significantly. And it's almost created this painterly look um, compared to what it was before. But when you look at the butterfly, a lot of the detail is still fairly intact. So it's, it's intelligently worked out what needs to be changed and then it's gone and made those changes. So I hope you found this useful. Um, I'll put some details in the link, uh, sorry, in the description below.